Hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome everyone from being part of our Black Stamp Speaker Series. My name is Penda Samba and I am the director of Tacoma Mesa. It's a pleasure to have you guys a part of our workshop this evening. We are going to record this workshop today so we will be able to share the Zoom link and um, to our students who are not able to attend um, the workshop this evening, we also will upload it to our YouTube channel. Um, so I would like to introduce my team before we start. Hello, I'm Tanika Bowie and I am the office manager with Tacoma Mesa. Welcome, thank you for being here. Hi, my name is Ashley. I'm the administrative assistant. Nice to see you all today. Hello everyone, my name is William. I am the program coordinator and welcome. All right, so this evening we have amazing STEM professionals who are going to share with us their journey and also just answer questions from various of our middle school students from our MESA program. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to um, list the order of speakers we have tonight. We have Mr. Hale, we have Nikki Watts, we have Brian Hopkins, we have Lathenia Nervo, we have Corey Watts, we have Lauren Arnold, we have Michael Ayers, and we have Dr. Hamley. And I apologize in advance if I said your name wrong, I apologize. All right, so we go ahead, go ahead and start with the first question that I have for everyone. And just as a reminder, each speaker has two minutes. Okay, so the first question that I have is, please introduce yourself, your career, and also share a little bit about your education journey from middle school to high school beyond. So I guess we can start with Mr. Hale. Oh, I get to go first, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the list in order in our chat. So you can know who's next. Thank you. Hi, I'm Michael Hale. And I presently work at the Palmer Community College as the STEM engineering mentor. Um, I've been there um, about five years. I'm a retired, um, and I still work as an engineer, but I re I'm re basically a retired engineer. I worked in the private sector, and then I, um, when I retired, I was working for the city of Tacoma. I grew up um, between the city of Chicago and Memphis. Um, I went to um, public school for up to sixth grade, and then I went to um, parochial and Catholic school ever since then. Even this, and it wasn't intentional, but I wound up going to Catholic college for my bachelor's in the Catholic college for my master's. I'm um, here at, um, and I did that right here in um, Washington at St. Martin's University. Um, I worked primarily as a um, project construction manager, uh, which required for me to move around because job, when you did construction, you moved around to where the projects were and that's how I got out here. I've been out here for um, quite a few years, and that's that's the quick, short story. In the time. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Nikki. Um, I currently work as a fermentation specialist at um, Medicago, which is um, a pharmaceutical company that is working to develop the first plant-based COVID vaccine. Um, as for my journey from middle school to high school, I'm relatively young, so I can speak to that. Um, in middle school, I wanted to be a forensic scientist um, and then progressing into high school. Uh, my high school required that I did a job shadow before graduating, so I volunteered um, at St. Joseph's um, Hospital there in Tacoma and I um, job shadowed a metal, medical technologist and I really enjoyed their work um, and what they had to contribute for um, patients as well as doctors. Um, so then I went on to Washington State University and obtained a degree in microbiology. Um, and then once I graduated, I graduated into a pandemic. Um, so that kind of sucked. So I started working at um, a company in Redmond, Washington that was developing a pneumococcal vaccine. Um, and then I got married and moved to North Carolina. That's how I ended up at this current um, pharmaceutical company that I work at. So that's me. Thank you, Nikki. All right, since we don't have Brian here, we can go ahead and um, go with Latinia. 
Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Lathena Nervo, um, professor at Pacific Lutheran University in the biology department. Um, in terms of my path to science, it wasn't a really straight one. Uh, when I was in middle school and transit, I'm from uh, New Jersey, so um, outside of North New Jersey, um, and went to public school my entire what, first through you know uh, a senior year. Um, and I really had, I liked science. I knew I enjoyed it um, and always did well in it, but really didn't have long-term plans with it at all. Um, neither of my parents went to college. Um, and so they were really pre uh, pressed upon us that college was important, but um, we knew we had to go. We just didn't know for what. <laughs> and so. I didn't really think about what I wanted to go to college for until probably junior or senior year of high school. And it happened to be their first year. I went, to, like I said, I, I went to school in, in an inner city, you know, low income area, and not a lot of resources, great teachers. They just didn't have a lot to, to work with. And my senior year of high school was the first time my high school had an AP, so advanced placement um, science courses. And I was given the opportunity to register for those classes, and I did. Um, I was applying for colleges. I had no idea what to put as a major. I didn't know you can go in undecided. So I know that now, obviously, but at the time I had no idea. Um, and I was in the AP bio class as well, and I became really close with that teacher. And she just like, well, if you like this class, why don't you just put biology? And so I ended up just putting biology because I enjoyed my AP bio class. Um, and went to college at a small HBCU, so historically black college um, outside of Washington, D.C., Bowie State University, um, where I ended up receiving my bachelor's in biology. And also at that crossroad of leaving college, still had no idea what I wanted to do. Thought I wanted to go to medical school, but wasn't sure. And ended up teaching high school for a little while and working and STEM programs for NASA and ended up then going to get my PhD in uh, biology and doing uh, at University of Maryland and then went on to do research at other institutions um, and that led me here and I knew I wanted to work with uh, college students and do research and so that's why I, I'm at Pacific Lutheran. Thank you so much Dr. Nervo. All right we have Corey next. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sergeant Watson. Uh, I graduated from Southwest Cab High School. Uh, during my time in high school, I, I always knew that I always wanted to uh, work in the field of electronics, whether it was being an IT specialist or anything dealing with computers. Um, I knew college wasn't necessarily like the route that I actually wanted to take. So uh, in my ROTC class, I had one of the teachers there that actually recommended me to look into the military. So um, after graduating high school, about a year or two afterwards, I decided you know, to look into the military, see, I guess, whatever, what all they had to offer. Uh, I spoke with the recruiter and I signed up for 25 Bravo, which is a, a IT specialist. And ever since then, I've just been uh, dealing with working on computers, dealing with software, hardware, installing different types of uh, programs and everything on computers. Thank you, Corey. And then next we have Lauren. Hi, um, my name is Lauren Arnold and um, I grew up uh, here in Tacoma and let's see, from I was actually homeschooled in middle school. I went to a really small uh, Christian high school. And then um, when I was in high school, the new Tacoma Narrows Bridge was getting built. So everybody's talking about bridges and stuff. And, you know, bridges, engineers, I kind of like math. So I was like, all right, I'll do, <laughs> I'll do that. Um, uh, neither of my parents graduated from college. And so there was an um, expectation that we go to college, but it was kind of vague. And I, I heard that before <laughs> on, in this conversation. So I think uh, somebody else had that experience. And um, 
Uh, yeah, so I went to uh, the University of Washington and studied civil engineering. Um, I ended up graduating with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering when the economy was not too hot. <laughs> and so uh, that was, turned out to be kind of a, um, a stroke of luck in the skies because it sent me on to graduate school, which um, I really enjoyed. I, I, I had no concept really of what graduate school was like. Um, or what it was for, um, but uh, I loved it and uh, got my PhD. Um, I worked in uh, industry in civil engineering for about seven years, at, but now I'm a professor of civil engineering at the UW Tacoma. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then we have Michael Ayers. You can that all day at work. But uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, hi everyone. My name is Michael Harris. I work for Columbia Bank, where um, I am the VP of Information Technology and Support. Um, my road to this point has been somewhat long and round and, and winding. Um, let's see here. I grew up uh, in the Seventh Ward in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I attended a middle school where um, they had some advanced placement classes. Left there in '87. Um, graduated high school in 1991. High school is where I took an interest in computers, um, taking um, an MS-DOS class, which will probably sound foreign to anybody else that's in information technology that's a little bit younger than me. But um, in the fall of 91, I enrolled in college. Uh, it turns out at the time I was not quite ready for college when I enrolled. Um, was more interested in all of the extracurricular activities instead of school itself. Um, so I left and joined the military. Um, one of my primary motivating factors for leaving home um, to join the military, to be candid with you, um, we were dirt poor and I needed money <laughs> to live. So, but uh, once I enlisted in the Air Force, I began my work, you know, as the military's equivalent of an information technologist. Uh, I eventually completed my degree um, graduated Bachelor of Science in Workforce Education and Development. Um, just kind of want to diversify my skill set relative to working in technology and just have something else different. Um, after the military, I worked in the federal government for 15 years um, as an information technologist before transitioning to the private sector the last seven years, um, where I worked at Expedia, the online travel company for a while just prior to me taking this role, which I've been in, you know, for the last four years. Thank you all. Thank you, Michael. And then we have Dr. Hongwei. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Titsi Hongwei. So I currently practice as a general dentist in the state of Minnesota. My path to becoming a dentist <laughs> Uh, was, uh, you know, it, it was a challenging road, but um, I always knew from a young age that I had a goal and that goal was to help people. And the person that really helped me to get to where I am was my general dentist, who was one of the few female general dentists that I had met when I was a teenager. And so when I expressed to her that I was interested in the dental field, she um, encouraged my interests, which was really important. And so it was many years of a journey of observing her in the office and then um, making the decision in college to become uh, a dentist. And then I went on to complete my dental education at the University of Louisville um, in Kentucky. And so today um, I practice full time as a general dentist. Thank you so much. Um, so the next step to this workshop is to present questions from our middle school students. So I'll go ahead and hand it off to Tonika. Thank you. Hello, everybody again. Um, the second question that we will ask is, what are your next big plans um, in your career? And we will start with Mr. Hale again. Anyway, I'm saying I was, I was saying, you're catching me at the end of my career. <laughs> what big plans do I have? I'm going to say they are to relax and try to do as little as I can. 
But I'm going to take myself back a few years. Um, and, and, you know, when I, when I first got out of school, um, you know, I don't know, I just knew I wanted to be an engineer. And the reason why I wanted to be an engineer because I liked, um, I, you know, from a kid, I liked taking things apart. I mean, I'm a civil engineer, but I, I really liked the world of electronics. And I still do. I just didn't want to go into the, the um, electrical engineering world because it changes so fast, as you guys can see. Every time you turn around, computers change, your cell phone changes. I said, I needed something a little more steady. But but when I was young, I, I, I didn't know what the world of engineering was. And I went into the field. I wanted to build skyscrapers. Okay, that was, that was, that was my big plan. I wanted to build skyscrapers. And when I came out of school, um, even it was even worse than that, that worst that worst year of that 2007, 2008. It, in the last, this, this, going back to the 70s, that was the worst one. That was even worse than that. And it was hard, super hard to find a job. And every place I went that, um, that I tried to get a job from that did what I wanted to do, and that was to build skyscrapers. They weren't hiring, and they weren't even building hardly anything at that time. But eventually, I, I got a, a job with a company um, that is now the largest um, consulting uh, firm in, in the United States, and it's um, now um, um, I, went, I went blank on the on the name. But in, anyway. We were a small firm. We probably had a thousand. It was a pretty good size firm. But I started out doing highways and and bridges and, and those kind of things. And from there, I went into build, um, building uh, wastewater treatment plants and water facilities. And 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 actually, I have I, I was the engineer on, on the two um, wastewater treatment plants that we have in this area. That's Tacoma. Um, Central Wastewater Treatment Plant, and then Pierce County. If you if you go out to the golf course, and um, you see you look over to the um, south there, you see that plant there. I was the um, one of the engineers on getting that built, and um, and then from there I just went on to doing all kinds of kinds of things. I've been involved in um, I, I, uh, I was involved in getting. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Hill. Um, your time is up for this. Okay, question. that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hell. We'll move on to Nikki. Um, hello, everyone. As for my next big plans, my immediate plan is to hopefully oversee this uh, plant-based COVID vaccine hit the market in the U.S. and in Canada. Uh, so that's really exciting. Um, in addition to that, I'm finally going to circle back around and hopefully get that certificate in medical technology, um, which is my original goal. And hopefully I'll transition on into working in a, a medical lab and helping get patients get, get that accurate diagnosis that they're, they're looking for. So that's what I'm currently working on. Wonderful. Thank you, Nikki. And we'll go on to Dr. Nova. Hi, um, in terms of next big things, uh, one of the next things I'm working on is writing a research grant. So uh, writing a grant to help fund my research where I am working on how tissues form at, uh, during uh, embryo development. So that's my specialty. Um, and so really trying to push that research forward is my next big thing. That's wonderful, thank you. All right, and Corey? Uh, so pretty much to keep it short and sweet, uh, my only next big three things that I really have right now is uh, getting a Security Plus certification, a Net Plus certification, and finishing off with the Microsoft Cloud certification. Uh, so uh, Security Plus is just network security. Um, Net Plus is pretty much just uh, networking as far as uh, on the IT side. And everything pretty much evolves around the cloud nowadays, whether it's like Apple, iCloud, Microsoft Cloud, it's always moving forward in the future. So it's more so just 
helping build around that for the Microsoft Cloud uh, portion. And that's it. Thank you for that explanation because that was way over my head. <laughs> All right, Lauren. Uh, yeah, so my next big thing, I, I kind of have two. Uh, one is um, I, I just started in this role that I'm at right now as a professor. And I said I'm a professor of civil engineering, and that's kind of true because that's my title. But there actually is not a civil engineering program at the University of Washington Tacoma yet. So it's starting in the fall. So I'm, I'm working on with some other faculty and developing that curriculum. So that's pretty exciting. Um, to have a new program there's forecasted to be a large shortage of civil engineers and engineers in general in Washington state and so the state is trying to start new programs and so I was lucky enough to be, become a part of one of them and part of my job will be uh, research and so my other thing is also writing research grants and um, I'm writing a research grant right now um, to study uh, how rock slopes behave in earthquakes. That's something that I studied for my PhD um, and I'm gonna continue to study it and um, try to work on uh, how to better understand and mitigate those natural hazards. That's great, thank you. All right, Michael Ayer, Ayer sorry. So this thing is on this time, right? <laughs> Cool. So let's see here. Um, my next big plan, um, I got a couple of things. One, uh, the bank I work for, they just acquired two other banks. So I'm getting those mergers completed successfully. But uh, more on a, on a more personal note, um, I'm planning to leverage, you know, all of the knowledge build her online business from the ground up. You know, obviously knowledge is at the core of everything we do these days. Um, you can't pick up your phone without, you know, obviously engaging. Um, what we decided to do is, um, my wife has this passion for fashion. Obviously, I have a love for technology, and we're, you know, find those two passions to create something of our own. Um, it will allow us to have our own business um, and do something that we love um, to be able to, you know, support the people that we love, our family. Um, and in a general sense, how this ties back, I just, I would always recommend that your, your plans include, you know, what you're passionate about and pursue those things that will never feel like work. So um, hopefully uh, this business takes off and um, I will become an employee of my wife instead of <laughs> for a bank one day. So that's the plan. All right, very nice. And next, Dr. Hangwei, please. Hi, so my next six plans are, I'm planning to la launch a program for young female professionals that are entering in their transition. So that will be later this year by providing um, coaching support services. I also plan to continue to work with the youth in my community um, by providing mentoring and uh, support in the schools. So those are my personal plans. questions. So Ashley, we'll let you um, ask the next question. Thank you, Dr. Hungway. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hill, when you were young, how did you know what you wanted to become as an adult? We can't hear you. I hadn't started saying anything yet. Um, so when I was a kid, um, as I mentioned a little earlier, I, I did like um, working with things to take it apart and and I wanted to build things. And, and I didn't know um, what that profession was. I didn't know what that was. I just know what I liked doing. And when once I got into high school, and and got exposed to um, different career options and things as going to school. Then I found out that what I liked doing, engineers were the ones that did that. And so I'm going to say when I got to high school, that's when I knew I wanted to go into the engineering field. Uh, but I was 
when, but I was a small kid knowing that I went to do the things that engineers did. Thank you. All right, so the next question is to Nikki. How did campus life shape your career path? Um, campus life. Um, I would say as far as WSU campus, it's pretty big. Um, it's a pretty large school. Um, definitely having um, peers around me, um, even though the class sizes are huge, um, as I progressed um, in college, especially my um, last two years, there were a lot of kids who were in the same major, who were anticipating going into the same field. So connecting with them, um, understanding what programs they were interested in, were they gonna go into those programs right away after graduating, if they were gonna transition to the workforce that was useful to have that community um, after graduating, um, because not everyone immediately goes into those careers. Some people have a transition period. Um, so definitely forming those friendships and connecting with those people was definitely pivotal, especially graduating in a pandemic that was very useful. Thank you. William, can you do the next question for Dr. Nervo? Um, Dr. Nerbo, if you can tell us a little bit, what is the importance of having a mentor while pursuing a career and when should someone look for a mentor? Um, I think it's incredibly important. Um, it's really great to get insight into the field that you're interested in, to understand the little small nuances, the little things that might not be common knowledge um, and help and have someone help you navigate that system. I think it's also great to have a support system in your career, not only in your personal life, with your family and friends and that type of thing as well, your chosen family. Um, it's really good to have a support system in your career as you're developing it as well. Um, someone that you can talk to if there's a problem or you know, even share good news and help support you in that way and just moving through the system because it's, it's shocking how many little things um, in terms of a career that you might not know going into it. Um, and so I think in every point, every stage of my career, like I told you the story about my teacher, I would consider her a mentor, my high school teacher. Um, moving into college, I had, I joined, purposely joined mentorship programs. So like I said, my parents didn't go to college. I didn't have much experience. Um, I think my college life would have been really difficult without that program. So I had a, a peer mentor, so someone who was a senior when I was a freshman in college. And um, so just navigating like where to go to study and how do I print something, just those little things that you just aren't aware of when you get to college, um, where to go to eat, like those types of things are um, seem like they would be intuitive and they someone would just tell you, but it, it doesn't really happen that way. And so even transitioning to graduate school, um, having um, mentors and choosing mentors or people I felt that I connected with was really helpful for finding a job after I graduated um, and discovering what type of research I liked. I knew I liked biology, I had a couple ideas, but really those mentorships and those relationships helped me figure out what type of biology I wanted to do. And, um, and they're also really great for connecting you with others as well. So if you're thinking about switching fields, it's really great to have a mentor who maybe knows someone or even like this sort of six degrees of separation get you there. So yeah, incredibly, incredibly valuable. Thank you. The next question is to Corey. Does your job change often? If so, how do you update your knowledge and skills? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it changed often. It's just more so uh, minor updates and everything that normally comes out. And uh, as far as like the skills and getting more so up to date on the skills so that way you can tackle whatever issue, uh, typically the military will at least send you to a class and or like provide some type of like uh, training for you guys for everyone to do whether it's online based or in person so that way you're never you're never in the dark for any situation that may come about Thank you. 
All right, the next question is for Lauren. Are there any limitations on your personal or social life because of your career in STEM? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the short answer is uh, yes, of course. There's there's always limitations on the way that you can spend your time when you have a, a job, but everybody has to have a job. So there, I don't think there's any special limitations on my um, personal life or social life because of my career. I think that it's, um, you know, it, it, it's something that's important for everyone, I think, to think about what uh, where their priorities are and how they want to spend their time. Um, I can tell you that, uh, you know, if you're working for a, a consulting company, and I, I suspect this is true whether you're in an engineering field or not, they will take as much of your time as you will give them. <laughs> um, but you, you, you go to work so that you can support other things in your life. So it's important to keep those in mind too and um, I, I think that that's one of the uh, one of the reasons why people should pursue uh, mentors uh, in their field and also outside of their field to get a little bit more sense of balance um, because it really is important I think to um, you know work hard but also take a break make time for yourself make time for the other people in your life. Um, work is important, and if you're lucky enough to do something you love, it can be fun, but it's not the most important thing. Thank you so much. All right, Michael, how has the STEM field changed in the past five years, and how do you think it will change in the next five years? Yeah, so that that one's kind of broad, but um, being a technologist, I guess I'll try to you know answer it from that perspective. Um, you know, this panel um, very impressed about the the breadth of uh, experience from different areas. But one thing that I will say that I've seen is, um, regardless of what the profession that you're in, technology has taken more and more of a um, centerpiece in what all of us do, right? And, um, you know, and, and you see it relative to being able to deliver um, from a standpoint of um, just just something as simple as data an analysts, right? Um, the data gets analyzed at a, at a much quicker rate as opposed to the days when we were with pen and pencil, pen and paper, if you will. Um, and it gives all of us an opportunity to deliver at a much higher rate of speed on whatever our deliverables are within our profession. And um, I just only see that. So that that's kind of the way things have transitioned in the last five years in a way that I see it continuing um, in the next five years. Uh, automation, really, um, you know, machine learning. Um, regardless of what career field you're in within STEM, it could be outside of STEM. Um, technology is going to drive uh, automation, machine learning, the ability to deliver faster and faster, not only from the standpoint of the power of the devices in our hand, but the ability to analyze data at a much quicker rate and make decisions about um, what we all are going to do in our professions. So that's kind of how I see it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, William, you want to ask the other question? Dr. Hangwei, can you explain to us what are the key success factors for those who are achieving success in STEM and how do you know you're making progress? You're muted, Dr. Hangwei. Okay. 
So I would say the key success factors are, I think the first thing is believing in yourself. I know that sounds cliche, but believing in yourself because you can have others believe in you, but then there's a point where you have to believe it, that you can do anything that you set your mind to. And so part of success is understanding that um, hard work is required to get to your destination. So if you're looking at the STEM fields, understanding that um, there's going to be classes that you're going to take that may not seem like they're related to the career you're trying to do, but they're going to help you so you can learn how to critically think. Also, just kind of help you so that you can perhaps consider um, how you can utilize those things in your career. And so I think it's taking all the experiences that you have and using those as positive ways to add on to further experiences that you may have later, hard work and believing in yourself. And then the second part of the question was in regards to how do you know you are making progress? You know you're making progress when you keep going and you don't give up. Thank you. All right, so we have one last question for everyone. And it's what advice would you like to give to our middle and high school Mesa students? So we can go ahead and start with Mr. Hale. So the first advice I would give you, and, and I say this quite often, and that is to dream. Dream big. And it's a um, motto of um, our engineering society that I belong to. But dream big. Dream of all the things that you think you could do or want to do, and then start pursuing them. Um, and then have belief in yourself, as, as you heard earlier. Have belief in yourself and pursue, pursue your dreams, pursue your dreams. And you can change dreams tomorrow. You can have a dream today and change it tomorrow, that's okay. But pursue the dream you have at the moment. And eventually you're gonna lock in on something and you're gonna say, okay, this is what I'm gonna stay with. So that that's my first bit, um, big bit of advice. Thank you. Um, as for my advice, I would just um, focus on being gracious with yourself. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't talk about the transition from middle school to high school to college and then entering the workforce um, when you spent majority of your life in school and that's where you're taught. And then to enter the workforce and work 40 hours a week, um, it's tough and a lot of people don't talk about it. So. As long as you're being, being gracious with yourself and waking up every day um, and continuing to strive and make sure you're talking with others that are going through the same transition, you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, just be gracious with yourself in that transition. Thank you. And Dr. Oh, Mandel. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I didn't realize it was me. <laughs> Um, uh, some really great advice, and I think a, a lot of the others have said some things I would have mentioned. Um, one thing that I, I think is really important for people uh, when, when you're transitioning from middle school to high school and thinking about that is um, realize that practice makes improvement, not, not perfect. And so these things come incrementally. So thinking about, you know, if someone plays an instrument, they weren't born with this ability to be able to do that, right? They put in the practice. I mean, I think it's hard to transfer that idea. We understand that, right? Or if you play a sport, you understand you have to practice. But I think oftentimes too with academics, people don't quite, uh, when you're a student, it's hard to see that, that you're making these small changes and improving very small. And I think just really realizing that sometimes you get knocked down and just try again and, and try to be persistent um, and just keep trying. Um, and like I said, realizing these things are incremental and you'll start to see changes, changes, you know, the more work that you put in. Thank you. Um, for me, I would say, um, 
definitely uh, do do exactly what you want in life. Don't worry about what um, any other person may judge you or have to say. Um, you have to do what makes you 110% happy. Uh, that's the only way you're going to be happy with yourself and with your job in the end. Thank you. Okay, well, I think I'm up next. And um, <clears throat> uh, I agree with everything I've heard so far. So I'm kind of kind of stretching to say something different. Um, but what I would say is, um, if you think you're interested in something, uh, or if you or if you know you're interested in something, find people who do that thing and talk to them. Uh, people like all the professionals on this call are happy to talk to young people. Uh, I'm not saying every person, you know, every professional is, but mo in my experience, most are. And, you know, a lot of times you'll hear people say, yeah, you know, ask, you know, reach out to me, give me, you know, let me know if you have any questions. And at some point uh, in college, I just started contacting everybody who said that and that was one of the best things <laughs> that I did because those people really when they say that they really mean it and uh, the other thing is uh, we, we meaning any professional who's willing to talk to you we'll give you the best advice that we can but we don't know the necessarily the best advice for you as an individual and so I really recommend reaching out to many many different people and when you when you start to hear the same advice over and over you think to yourself ah okay that there must be something to that or if something really resonates with you and you think oh yeah that really makes sense to me you know gravitate towards that um, because as much as we want to help you we don't always know the, the exactly the right thing for your situation so you know, you're you're in charge of your own life and your own career, um, but people are willing to help you, and and I think you should seek them out. Thank you. All right. So, um, yeah, there's some things that uh, were presented that are kind of consistent with some of what I was, what my thoughts are here. Um, I will just say. Um, something that I heard already, do, do what makes you happy um, and extend grace. Those are two tenets that I tend to live by. Um, I'll tell you, I'm 49 years old. It took me 46 of them to figure out that there's nothing more important to your health and well-being than to do what makes you happy. Um, my hope for all people, but especially young people, is that they find their happy place as soon as they possibly can um, and exist in that place as much as you can. Um, every day won't be the greatest, but um, if you're intentional in your efforts to be happy, the right things will gravitate towards you, um, whether that be the job you want, the love you deserve, the right people being in your life to support you. Um, also, give grace as much as you possibly can. I base this on knowing no human is perfect, especially me. I've needed it and will need grace from others from time to time. Um, so I'll tell you, I extend grace to others every chance I get. Um, so those two things, be happy um, and extend grace, have helped me rise to levels I could not have imagined as a child um, in my journey with information technology, but uh, really more importantly in life. So um, that's my advice to you guys. <laughs> Thank you all so much. And again, we can transition to Tanika. We have one more, Dr. Hongwei. Sorry, Dr. Hongwei. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I echo all the sentiments from earlier. I think just honing in on asking for help. So, you know, I know we, we don't live on an island, none of us, you know, alone. So I did not get here alone. And I'm sure uh, we can all say we didn't get here alone. So don't be afraid to ask for help. And then I would also say, um, carve, feel comfortable carving your own path. You're unique, and so everyone's gonna have their own journey. I was the first uh, in my family ever to go into the dental field. 
And so if I would have looked around me and thought, is there somebody else doing this? I would have maybe not have, you know, pushed through. And so I think feeling comfortable being the first sometimes and carving your own path, that would be my advice because that's um, really ultimately what's going to make you happy. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you all for your wonderful words. At this time, we would like to open it up. If there is anything else anybody on the panel would like to share with us. Anybody? If not, again, um, oh, yes, Mr. Hale. Thank you. So I, I would just, um, and I don't know what, who particularly the audience is, but I'm going to say it is, I'm going to just assume it is all students um, in high school. But I, I would just say, again, pursue your dream, but I would say you got to do something. You, you can dream your life away. You got to take action. And I'm going to say with the action, you got to have some some determination to get through and to achieve what you want. You got to have some perseverance because it's not going to always be easy and you're going to be knocked to the curb. At least it's going to feel like you've been knocked to the curb as you go through this journey. But you get up and when you get up, uh, <laughs> I teach martial arts and people get knocked down. I said, when you get up, you don't just get up, get up with a plan. <laughs> so, so when you get up, you just don't get knocked down again. Have a plan. When you get up, have a plan what you're gonna do when you get up. So, um, and perseverance and explore. I, I, I would tell people to explore. There's so many things out there that's, that's out there. So explore the things that's around you as well. There's so many things compared to when I was um, your age um, that there is now explore because what you may like or do now like you want to do now it, there's some other things so um, and then then, then like I said perhaps perseverance and work hard and develop good work ethics have some moral characters about the things and how you conduct yourself. Have good morals in your life. And that'll that'll take you further than you've ever thought. You know, if you have some good ethics and some good morals to live your life by. Uh, one thing that, uh, oh, by the way, I always like hearing Michael talk. I, I, I've known, I've, run into Michael, you know, across the past, across town for the past several years of these kinds of things. Um, so thank you, Michael. Uh, I had one thing that I uh, wanted to say, which was something that I, I guess I wish I had known when I was in middle school or high school or college. Um, and which is that, um, you know, so in, in my field, I got my PhD and now I'm a professor, right? So that's that's a, a relatively high level in within my field and within any any field and it, every step along the way i had times when i thought i'm not sure if i'm cut out for this i'm not sure if i'm smart enough for this um and so i, ju I just want to encourage anyone who's pursuing something and starts to uh have those feelings just because you have them doesn't doesn't mean it's true um there's been many times when i've taken a class done my best i didn't fully understand what was going on and then at the end of the class you feel like well what what what, what am i doing here is that is that worth it and you don't understand it until a few quarters later or maybe in a few years later um and and so sometimes um, it takes time to grow into what you're trying to do. Uh, don't look at people who are where you want to be and expect yourself to be there right now. 
it takes work to get there and you can do it. Um, and so I, yeah, I used to, I, I used to think that grad, you know, getting a PhD is just for like, you know, super smart people, right? Uh, and you do have to be smart, but you don't have to be, you know, some, some genius, right? You just have to work hard, enjoy what you're doing. Um, and, you know, it has to be something that you want. Um, so I, I wish that I had known that. Um, like I said, I was lucky enough to not be able to get a job and that forced me into graduate school. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I, I hope that I hope that people find that encouraging if they ever run into some obstacles in their career. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for those that advice for the students. Thank you guys for sharing your stories. Um, if there is no one else that wants to add anything, I would like to um, um, also thank um, Dr. King and Sezi. They are from Washington Mesa and they joined us tonight. So I want to say thank you to them for being here as well as Ann Amman. And she is our representative at PLU. So thank you guys for attending this. We appreciate all of the support. Um, and let's give our speakers a round of applause. Thank you guys so much. This is so impactful. So thank you guys. Um, and if there's nothing else, I would like to say good night and thank you for being here.